Great. So welcome to our first tutorial uh, for Q3 Hackathon. Uh, happy to turn things over to Ramya. Ramya, I'd like you to introduce yourself to the community and then you know, feel free to share your screen and we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So this is Ramya and I'm with the quality team and I'm actually managing a team uh, which, is, which comes under the devs uh, section. And um, in this meeting, I'll just go over few things which we want to highlight as part of uh, contributing to the uh, quality team. So let me just share my screen. Cool. Yeah, and then for, for people online, this will be posted on the hackathon page and uh, shortly after the after the uh, uh, after the session's over. So, sure. so um, in GitLab, just to give you an idea, we have uh, a bunch of tests written. So we definitely have the unit tests, uh, which comes as part of the development itself. And apart from that, we also have integration tests and feature tests. And we also have something called end-to-end -end tests. So these are basically uh, tests that cover the end-to-end -end flow. And uh, you can find these tests inside uh, the QA folder in the GitLab C project. And uh, there's also a readme in that folder. So that uh, gives you all the details about how these tests are structured and where you can find different things. And uh, these end-to-end -end tests, as it's specified, it's, uh, it comprises of both the UI tests as, and, as, and the API tests as well. So uh, the UI tests, which captures the end-to-end -end flow, and the API tests, these are not the tests of uh, testing each API endpoint per se. It, it's more uh, of testing the API workflows. So all of those tests are uh, categorized, and they are part of these end-to-end -end tests. And uh, yeah, there are a few best practices we follow as part of uh, our development. And one, one such thing is to use APIs for creating any resource that are needed as part of test setup itself. And uh, so that is one. And another thing that we actually follow is to use page objects. And uh, we have the page objects and the actual test code separate. And you can see an example which is given here. So uh, basically, the page object contains all the details about, uh, about the elements and the selectors. And uh, the test code, uh, it has the actual logic to test the various flow. Um, yes, and if you're going to add a new end-to-end -end test, then this would be the place. And these are the few things that you might have to create. Like, cre you might have to create a new page object, or you could even reuse an object that is already present and just write your test logic alone. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, so this is about how to name your branch. So it actually matters how you name your branch because uh, if the name starts with QA or if it ends with QA, then we have a different workflow defined for the entire uh, CI pipeline. So what does this workflow do? It actually sits a few jobs which are not relevant for the test code. And um, there, are, uh, there is one more job which is uh, run as mandatory for these uh, QA tests. So I can talk about the mandatory job later on. So it, it is always good to uh, follow these naming conventions so that your CI pipelines are quicker and you, you can get a quicker feedback. And how do you run the existing tests? Or even if you add a new test, how do you run it? So these are like, uh, I've just highlighted the basic things that are needed. Obviously, you would need the GDK to be set up, uh, so GitLab development kit. And once you set it up, and once you have, uh, when, once you give a GDK run, meaning you have started your server, your local server, then you can actually uh, visit this uh, local host uh, colon 3000, and you should be able to see your GitLab instance up and running at that uh, port. And uh, to run the test, so this is the command that you can use. Use bundle exec bin QA and then in test instance all uh, means that it's going to test the instance that uh, you're going to provide. So the instance here is the local host colon 3000 itself. So that's the uh, address which it would use. 
so uh, you can also run individual spec files. Like I've also mentioned uh, an example of that here. So uh, say for instance, I want to run a particular, uh, the tests under a particular folder, then I can just give the folder path or I can even specify that spec file itself. And you can also read a lot more about these, uh, these things. And you can also see what are the various ways in which you can run the tests and uh, what are the various environment variables that are being used which you could set to run the test. So there are, uh, say for instance, one uh, variable which could be of use for you uh, would be the username and password. So, um, th there is a default username and password, but if you wa want to uh, give a different one, then you can actually use the environment variable GitLab underscore username and GitLab underscore password as part of this uh, bundle exec command, and uh, it would take that and use it in your um, uh, test. So th uh, there are a bunch of information in those links in the readme file again, so you, you should definitely take a look at that. The GitLab QA gem. So this is something that uh, I want to talk a little bit about, and it's good to know about it. Uh, so this is basically a gem that we have uh, written. And uh, why is this gem used? And what is the purpose of this gem? So this is basically an orchestrator. So uh, if you want to run your tests on your local, then it's good enough if you just have your GDK set up. But if you want to run it against any other instance, say for instance, if you want to run it against a Docker image, uh, which is uh, already built and uh, you want to run it against that, you want to run your test against a GitLab Docker image, or if you want to run your test against a live instance, any other instance. So in, in that case, you can actually use this GitLab QA gen. And uh, uh, this, again, the commands that you can find here are very much similar to whatever you see, uh, you saw in the previous slide, right? So you can actually specify so, uh, the, uh, the URL of the instance, and then you can also specify specific uh, spec files as well. So those can be given as command line arguments. Um, yeah, the example that I've given here is actually uh, an instance where it's actually fetching the GitLab uh, Docker image, which is of version uh, 10.8.1. So it would just fetch that Git Docker instance and it would just run your uh, tests on top of it. Yes, and this is just an example of a CI pipeline, how it would look like when you run your tests. Uh, so there are a couple of manual jobs uh, called package and QA manual and review QA all. So you can see these two jobs specified here, like uh, under the QA uh, stage, if you see there are like, there is this DAST and followed by package and QA, um, QA and then it's followed by package and QA manual and uh, it has a bunch of things. So what's the difference and what does it mean? So uh, basically uh, the package and QA manual job is a, uh, is run only when you trigger it. So if you see there is a, a an arrow mark, right? Like a play button that you can see near package in QA, right? So what it means is uh, unless it's triggered, it, it, it the tests would not run. So you can trigger it manually and then the tests would run. That's the same with uh, review QA all as well. So once you trigger those jobs, uh, it would start running. Uh, but there's one job which is auto triggered only for QA branches and that's package in QA. So that's, that's why you actually see, uh, it looks like there are two package in QA jobs, but actually it is one, the first one is package in QA and the second one is package in QA manual. So, uh, so the first one runs by default for all the QA branches, meaning any branch that starts or ends with QA. Uh, and, and what does these, uh, what does it do? Uh, these actually run all the tests that are present inside the QA folder. And uh, yeah, so that's what it does. And what is the difference between Q, uh, review QA all and package in QA manual? So, uh, or any package in QA job. So basically review QA all, it runs on top of the review apps, if you know what a review app, app means. So basically it's just an instance and uh, uh, a dynamic environment that is spun up uh, with all of your changes in it. And you can actually uh, run all your end-to-end -end tests on top of this dynamic environment. 
So that's uh, that's what review QA all does. Uh, but then packaging QA, it basically it uh, does everything uh, using Omnibus, and all the tests are actually run after that. Yep, those are the uh, few things which I really wanted to highlight. And uh, yeah, all of those instances, uh, I mean, all of these details are actually there in the handbook as well. So you can take a look at that. And these are few links which you can, uh, which will help you to get started quickly. And uh, yeah, all of the issues for which we are accepting contributions are listed here. And uh, the quick start guide. And we also have a style guide and best practices guide, which would help in. Uh, Mm, uh, understanding the various best practices we follow as the quality team and you can uh, take a look at them as well. So it looks like there is a question. I, I just added a, a piece of the link to the, yeah. to the issues. Yeah, actually, if you don't mind like clicking on that link. So I wanted to, I a couple of questions if you don't mind, wanted to ask. Sure. Uh, so in which one, Ray, from the start? Uh, no, just on, on the list of issues. Okay, sure. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that like the first couple actually has a weight of one. So, I mean, I think those are, should be good for like a relatively newcomers, I would assume, right? But yes. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if it's Wal uh, Walmir who, who put the weights there. So, I mean, maybe this is a dumb question. Like, I was looking at those issues. Uh, is I mean, is this, like, uh, more, like, document documentation of what testing needs to be done, like, in the markdown file? Or is this is something that requires people to, like, uh, write code in, like, Ruby, for example? Yes, uh, it's the second one. Like, it, it needs people to write... Uh, code in Ruby and uh, right. these are basically test scenarios which uh, can be automated like uh, rather than doing a manual test these tests right. can be automated so these are a couple of uh, scenarios about that. okay so they just need to create a merge request here in this project and then uh, you know they can ping you know either you or me uh, to get our attention uh, yes so the merge request can still happen on GitLab CE itself uh, okay yeah because okay. we have the code residing there only. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that definitely helps. And then obviously, I mean, this, you know, if, if people have other issues that they want to open, you know, obviously people are welcome to do that. They shouldn't, uh, I mean, this is sort of a, I, I think what I like to call a starting point of, of where people can get started. But if people can think of other issues or other things that they want to work on there, obviously people are welcome to create new ones. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yep. So that is all I had. Uh, so uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah. If people have any questions, I mean, you can like go off mute and verbalize them, or feel free to type them on the chat. We'll give it a few more minutes. Make sure that uh, people are able to ask questions. Cool. And I also find the documentation to be, I think from, if you, let me add a link uh, here, if I can find it. Give me a second. Uh, it's off of the uh, tutorial session uh, uh, section of the hackathon page. Uh, people, if people haven't read this yet, I thought this was a good overview. It's basically in, in, in the docs for end-to-end -end testing. Uh, I think a lot of these stuff, uh, Rami, you already went through, but this is a good reference material, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions or, uh, yeah, I, I thought like, uh, cause I know there are people that are very interested and passionate about testing. So I, uh, Rami, thanks for coming. And uh, I think this is somewhat long overdue. Uh, but uh, thanks for uh, thanks for your presentation. And then, yeah, if, uh, if after the session or or people are watching the recording, people have any questions, I mean, feel free to find either me or Ramya. We're obviously on the team on the team page on the get, about GitLab.com, and uh, happy to help you out. All right, cool. All right, thanks everybody. I guess happy hacking. Yeah. So, all right. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.
Bye-bye. Thanks.